Could 2025 be the year of typing in 3D? Well, there's now multiple brands you can choose from for anybody who wants to try a keyboard that leverages three-dimensional switch technology versus the traditional one-dimensional switch technology. And that wasn't the case when I first started building Caracorder. So I wanted to just take a moment at the beginning of this year to look at this trend as a whole and try to as objectively as possible without trying to sell you anything, just look at why are people moving from 1D to 3D and why are there so many people that are so enthusiastic about typing in 3D? In this video, I'll be covering one, what is typing in 3D? And then I'll be covering three key advantages of typing in 3D, faster reaction time, less repetitive strain, as well as reduced cognitive load. There's a lot of other things that I believe are advantageous about 3D versus 1D typing, but I wanted to pick the three that I felt could be the most clearly explained and most objectively proven as well. So I hope that everybody watching by the end of this video, my goal is that we can, even if you still prefer or believe that 1D is better than 3D, I want to make sure that everybody can walk away from the video agreeing that one, 3D gives you faster reaction time, it gives you less per repetitive strain, as well as a reduced cognitive load. So what is typing in 3D? Well, historically, most keyboards have used a one-dimensional switch like this that functions pretty much the same as a typewriter. You press it down to activate it, and then you lift it up along the same axis to deactivate it. A three-dimensional switch, by comparison, in addition to the downward motion in the z-axis, pushing it down like this. You could also move it forward and backwards in the y-axis, and then you could also move it left and right in the x-axis. So in front of me here, I have a Caracorder Lite, and I have a Caracorder 2. So the Caracorder Lite uses one-dimensional switches. Caracorder 2 uses three-dimensional switches. So if I want to type the on the Caracorder Lite, it's probably very similar to how you're used to typing on a keyboard. I press T, H, E, and then enter. If I want to type that on the Caracorder 2, I'm moving my fingers around in different directions. So slower, I'll take this finger downwards towards me. I'll pull this finger upwards towards the sky. And then I'll pull this finger down towards me. And then enter is my index finger upwards. And the layout of a three-dimensional input device may be designed to try and match QWERTY as, most, as closely as possible, or it can be completely different. Just like the layout of a one-dimensional keyboard can be made to mimic the typewriter as close as possible, or one-dimensional layouts can be completely different as well. Here's those two switches I showed you before up close. This one in my left hand is the one-dimensional switch, and this one by my right hand is the three-dimensional switch. And just like there are different styles of switches with different actuation forces and sound profiles for 1D switches, there's also a variety of different types for 3D switches. There's less types of 3D switches available than 1D just because uh, the 1D have been more widely used historically. And that leads us to our first advantage, faster reaction time. And basically what this comes down to is very simple, is reduced finger travel. So let's say you're using a one-dimensional keyboard and assuming that you need more than 10 buttons for what you're doing, whether you're playing a game or you're typing a sentence, your fingers are going to be flying all over the place. Your fingers have to lift off of one switch, has to travel to another switch, register that other switch is there, and then press that other switch. Whereas on a three-dimensional switch, you pretty much have every possible input just right there, literally at your fingertips. So let's imagine a situation where a random letter is going to appear on your screen and you have to press that letter as fast as you can. No matter how good you might be at that using a one-dimensional keyboard, any individual has the potential to be better at that activity, at that reaction test, if they're using a three-dimensional keyboard. All right, so I actually found a website that has that exact test I just described. It's called reactokey.com and we're going to take the test with a QWERTY keyboard and with a uh, 3D keyboard. And I've never taken this test before so I'll probably not be great at it. It says test your typing speed. I would definitely not say that this is a test of typing speed. It's more a test of reaction speed. Okay. 
All right, so I was able to get 60 words within one minute, so about one letter per second. That doesn't sound like it's very good, honestly. All right, here's the same test with a 3D input device. All right, so 88 letters, I assume word count means letters. Uh, so 28 more letters than I was able to do on the QWERTY. And granted, I am out of practice on a QWERTY, so those numbers are probably skewed a little bit. Let me know in the comments um, what you were able to score on this test. Um, again, I haven't done this before, but this is just kind of a, a rough thumbnail measure. Uh, I definitely do think that anyone with practice on both devices would be able to perform much higher on this device. So yes, we're talking a magnitude of milliseconds per input, but those milliseconds add up. The average person uses their computer over seven hours per day. And that is the perfect transition to our second advantage, less repetitive strain. This one is really interesting, and there's a couple of different ways we can measure success in this category, both of which point to a pretty clear win for the 3D side. So when we're looking at reducing repetitive strain, carpal tunnel is a normalized epidemic, we are trying to have a more balanced distribution of load between all of the muscles in our individual finger, and then also a more evenly distributed load across all of our fingers. It's sort of similar to why most people don't go to the gym and work out the same muscle every single day, but would rather focus on building a balanced physique. And a lot of people do type in 3D purely for the ergonomic benefits. As much as I love typing fast and as cool as I think it is to type at the speed of thought, I think the reviews and the testimonies that impact me personally the most are the ones from people that say, wow, this really helped with my carpal tunnel or even this completely cleared away all my hand and wrist pain. Like that is really special, I think. And I would never promise this is gonna solve all your problems, but I think that if you have been suffering from repetitive strain injuries due to typing on a typewriter or a keyboard, uh, that it's worth a shot at least. And then outside of more evenly distributing that muscular load in each individual finger, it also more evenly distributes the muscular load across your fingers or across your, your digits rather. One of the most glaring design flaws of the QWERTY keyboard and the typewriter is that typically both of your thumbs are only for one button. A full-size keyboard has over a hundred buttons and yet your most powerful, your strongest, your, your highest dexterity, and most capable fingers, both of them are limited to one button. It makes absolutely zero sense. But on a three-dimensional input device, typically, and it's different for all of them, uh, but typically the thumbs are a lot more well utilized. So on a, a CC2, for instance, you're hitting one-third of all of the inputs are from your thumb. If you think about how fast that you type on a smartphone with just your thumbs compared to your fingers, that should give you an idea of how useful those two fingers are and why we should be utilizing them more than we are on a typewriter. And that leads us to our third and final advantage, reduced cognitive load. And I'll probably get a little bit of pushback in the comments on this one, but that's okay, I stand by it. And a lot of people, if you know me, you might think I'm about to jump into to transition over to cording and fluid corded character entry and ultra high speed text entry and compound cording and all that stuff um, that is fascinating and wonderful about CCOS, but I'm not going to do that. I don't want this video to become an advertisement for Careflare. I want to really isolate just the 1D versus the 3D, and I want people from other companies that are making um, 3D input devices to be able to kind of use this as a reference or even um, to share this to advocate for their devices as well because I want, um, I feel like a rising tide in 3D text entry will raise all ships and I really, 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 really want to see 
more and more companies making products like that um, and just see this trend continue to grow to the point that this is no longer a, a niche product market. I really, really believe that typing in 3D has high potential to grow to the point it's no longer a niche product category and can become quite mainstream. Of course, if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't have spent the last 10 years of my life working on this technology. Uh, but I digress. Advantage three, reduced cognitive load, comes from the fact that learning to type in 3D, in my opinion, is much easier than learning to type on a 1D keyboard. A lot of people are intimidated and they don't want to relearn to type, but what they don't realize is that when you're typing on a, a 1D input device, the spatial relativity of your fingertips to the caps is always changing. So hitting the same letter can be a different muscle memory depending on where it's at in the word and the context of the sentence and everything else. Whereas on a 3D input device, it is always isolated to the same finger in the same muscle movement even. So whenever I hit the letter H, it's always this finger, it's always pitching up. I'm not a neuroscientist, but there's definitely something about having the exact same key always tied to not only the same finger, but also the same exact muscle as an immutable constant that just makes it so much easier to remember. That's all for this week's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, if anybody out there is interested in 3D text entry, they just want to try a device they're not sure, or if you want to design and build your own, I would love to help you. Please reach out. Um, any companies out there that maybe manufacture other keyboards that are interested in getting into the space, please reach out. No expectations, no strings attached. I would love to help you. Thanks so much for watching. This is week 53 of Careport Updates every week till the whole world can type at the speed of thought.